If you are one of those who think fine tuning is too technical or difficult, I'm going to prove you wrong today. I've put together the easiest way you can fine tune a large language model 100% free and locally without using any API or third party platform. As a challenge, I'm also going to run it on a relatively old PC, which is still not optimized. This means I'm going to run the training on CPU. So even if you are GPU poor, you don't have any excuse not to complete this tutorial. On top of that, I will leave a link to the process and code for this tutorial so you can follow it at your own pace. For this tutorial, I will use a Jupyter Notebook, but feel free to use your VS Code or any IDE. For that first, I will make a virtual environment on my PC and activate it as you see. But we will also need two extra steps here. One is to install IPy kernel, and the second is to use it to link the virtual environment to the Jupyter Notebook like this. Now we are ready to change the kernel from Python 3 to this project BNV that we just made to open a new notebook. Everything sorted. We can now start the process. So essentially, fine tuning a language model is the process of providing additional information in the form of specific examples, context, and any other types of numerical or textual data to the pre-trained model in order to make it suitable for a specific task. But before jumping to fine tuning, we want to make sure we actually need to fine tune an LLM. That's because fine tuning a whole model can be a lengthy process and computationally expensive, and it often requires an external cleaned and labeled dataset. So here we're going to test an LLM on a simple sentiment analysis task and record its performance to see if improvement is needed. For this tutorial, I'm using the BERT based on case model from Google, which is a very lightweight model with only 110 million parameters to make the process a bit faster. It is also uncased, meaning it's not case sensitive, which is a great option for sentiment analysis of tweets and informal sentences. BERT or bidirectional encoder representations from transformers is an encoder only transformer model with four components or processes. The first is tokenization, where chunks of text are divided into tokens, roughly speaking, words. The embedding component converts these token sequences to vectors, which are lower dimensional representations. The encoding step is where self attention is applied. And finally, the task head converts the vectors back to one hot encoder encoded tokens while predicting the probability for each token. If these terms and concepts are new to you, I've made a short video about how transformer language models work. I will leave its link in the description box too. To get started with this session, we need to install several libraries too. I found out that these specific versions work better together. So if you want to reproduce this session, copy this from the link. Now it's time to specify the names of our model, sequence classifier, tokenizer, and optimizer as they appear in the Hugging Face Transformers library. Since we are using BERT, it's easier to work with BERT for sequence classification and BERT tokenizer. And we specify three labels for positive, negative, and neutral sentiments of text as is customary in most sentiment analysis. You can ignore this warning and move on to set the parameters for a function to analyze sentiments, since we are using torch specifying PT returns PyTorch sensors. Padding means adding extra zeros to the shorter sequences to make their lengths equal to the longest sequence. As you can see in this example, which I stole from the internet, the first sequence needs two zeros and the second needs three zeros as padding to make them equal to the length of the last sequence. Here I'm setting the maximum length to 512, which I think is generous and perhaps not necessary because tweets are not usually this long. Truncation is the opposite of padding. So we basically cut off the excess parts of any sequence that is longer than these maximum lengths or 512 tokens. For prediction purposes, we need to specify which of the three labels should represent each digit. All that is left is to pass in each prediction each time we print our text. For the text, I'm typing this tricky sentence, how on earth can I analyze this, which has a negative vibe to it. But the model predicts the sentiment as neutral. To be honest, the previous time I ran this, it predicted the sentiment as positive, which is also a wrong classification. I have tried a bunch of tweets and sentences here as you see in this log, but feel free to experiment with different ones on your own to get a feel of the model's performance. 
You can also pass in a bunch of tweets and sentences at once as a list and use a simple for loop to apply that sentiment analysis function. Here's my own evaluation. When I run the model, it just predicts all as neutral or all as positive, which reminds me of this joke. What is the similarity between atoms and large language models? They both make up everything. So it looks like we do need to fine-tune this paired model. I have made a visual guide to the fine-tuning process with these lovely robots. So basically we have a base LLM with inaccurate outputs. We provide it with an external source of information, especially labeled data for a specific task. For example, labeled data on sentiment analysis. Then we fine-tune this model with this data and update its weights which help with better prediction. And finally, rerun the task with a fine-tuned model to see any improvements and repeat the process if needed with more data. For our external source of data, we can use this tweet sentiment extraction dataset from Hugging Face, which has more than 30,000 examples of labeled tweets in this four column format with tweet IDs, the actual text or tweets, and the last columns with the labels in numerical and textual formats, where zero is negative, one is neutral, and two positive. Loading the dataset is as easy as calling the load dataset module. Um, and you can also use the pandas data frame to load the training part of the data set. And here I'm printing the first seven rows. As you see, it all looks fine. The first stage of fine tuning is similar to running the model with a tokenizer. Here is a visual guide to tokenization with discrete tokens or words. Some models also apply elementization and stemming at this stage, which basically further cuts down the words to their basic forms. For example, dropping the ing of the verbs. Let's postpone the nuts and bolts of this tokenization process to another video. I've already talked about the tokenizer padding and truncation. The new one is this map function from the datasets library for batch processing. The next bit is where you define the training and evaluation datasets. The most important part of this is to specify the number of examples from the dataset, which hugely affects the quality of the outputs, for example, the accuracy of sentiment classification. You can see me setting it to 500. You can start from 100, which I found to take around five minutes for training and test it before increasing this range. Here, I must mention that it's unlikely that even with 500 examples, you can see a significant improvement. Most probably you need a few thousand. I'm keeping it here to 500 because this tutorial is meant to show you the process rather than reaching an accurate output. With that in mind, let's run this and take a look at the output table where the attention mask is applied to the sequence, which is basically giving zeros to the unimportant tokens and ones to the tokens that should be attended to because they are important for the context. This is part of the positional encoding in transformer models. What this means is that during the self-attention mechanism, the attention mask only allows each position to attend to its previous positions. This way, masking the next positions in the sequence prevents context leakage. This is very important for training models that I have already explained in my Transformers video. Now, here's the controversial part, because BERT is a bidirectional encoder-only model, which means it should effectively allow both directions, meaning previous and next positions to be attended to. So I think this step is only included in the hugging face implementation of the models. If you're interested in this type of detail, let me know in the comments so I include them in my future videos. The next step is to initialize the model. This is similar to what we did at the beginning of this tutorial, except that now tokenization is done on training and evaluation datasets. And finally, the moment of truth. where we get to define the arguments for training or fine-tuning the model using the trainer module from Transformers. Here, I'm only including the important ones, but there are a zillion other arguments to set if you need them. The first argument I'm passing is the name of the output directory or folder for the final model weights. If you're trying to fine-tune incrementally with different sample sizes, you also need to let the model override the weights each time. Next is to define whether evaluation should be done in epochs or steps, not a deal breaker really. And the number of epochs for training, which is how many times to go through the whole training dataset for training the model. The default is three, but for this tutorial, we will take it easy on the poor model. Let's say one. 
I'm going to change the learning rate too, so we don't have to wait forever. The next two arguments are training and evaluation batch sizes that are set to eight by default. Let's keep this for now, but if you have a super large data set, you can change them. The weight decay is the important bit if you're applying L2 regularization to prevent overfitting. It adds penalty to large weights except layer norm weights. The default is zero, but since we are EO, we will impose a penalty, but keep it bearable. The next two beta parameters are meant for the Adam W optimizer as coefficients for computing running averages of the gradient. These are default values. And finally, the no excuse zone of this project. We set no CUDA to true side runs on CPU. All that is left is to pass in the arguments, the model, and training and evaluation data sets to fine tune the model. Now, you should be able to see this blue bar. I'm going to fast forward the process because for me, with 500 examples, it took around 20 minutes. Once completed, you should also see these stats for the training and validation. As you see, the validation loss is slightly lower than the training loss. Don't panic. It's because we applied regularization and added penalties to large weights. In our case, this is actually a good sign that the model didn't overfit the training data. So we are done with fine tuning. We can now save the fine tuned model and tokenizer and use the same code as before, but this time with the updated or fine tuned model. This one spews out neutral to that previous tweet, which is one step better than classifying it as positive. But this was expected as we didn't train a very large number of tweet examples. You can also test it on the same batch of tweets and let me know how it went. But more importantly, let me know how many data samples you had to train on to see any significant improvements in your examples, sentiment accuracy, and how long it took on your PC. And here's the video I promised you.